As far as cost and margin squeeze is concerned, we've seen a lot of commodities now peaking out. Uh, we've seen precious metals, we've seen steel uh, peaking out. And obviously, as we move forward, we do expect uh, the commodities to have peaked out and therefore the cost pressures to be far less and we'll keep, continue to take calls on judicious price increases along with the accelerated leap savings that we continue to do in order to manage the impact on customers as well as on, on margins. So overall, when we look at the outlook, uh, the outlook for fiscal year 23, uh, we expect strong rebound in the two-wheeler sector, and we do expect the cost pressures uh, to ease off um, as, as industry as such. We, are, we continue to launch more and more products in the premium portfolio to boost our market share, and that should help us uh, moving forward apart from the premiumization and obviously the scale-up of global business uh, that we continue to do. Uh, on the EV front, uh, as we have announced earlier itself, uh, we will be uh, doing our launch uh, in the month of March, and, and we continue to invest strongly behind our current investments like Aether and Gogoro. You've seen the announcements already. Apart from that, we are forging collaboration and partnerships uh, with, with many players in the ecosystem. And therefore, we are addressing uh, EV as more as an ecosystem rather than a product or a stream of, of revenue. With that, uh, let me now uh, hand it over back to you, Umang, and to the floor uh, for questions. Uh, and we'll be happy to, uh, to elaborate, explain, and clarify and answer all your queries. Thank you for that. Uh, we'll now take questions. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes, wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. We request participants to limit their questions to two per participant. Should you have more questions, request you to join the queue back. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Kujan Prithiani from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for taking my questions. Uh, two questions from my side. Firstly, on the investments that we've made uh, in the associate companies, that is Aether and the Hero FinCorp. Uh, could you just talk a little bit more on both of these, firstly on Aether, as to how do we see this association progressing over time? Is it beyond? Does it go beyond the stake that we have? Uh, in terms of, you know, alliances on the business front as well. And secondly, on the hero FinCorp, now this is a pretty large capital infusion that we're doing uh, when the industry is not growing. So, you know, maybe give us more color around what's the thought process behind this or is there some asset quality risk that we're anticipating uh, in the business? Thanks, Gunjan, uh, for the question. As far as Aether is concerned, as you've seen consistently every round, uh, we've been uh, participating in the capital raise. Uh, and, and over a period, we've been increasing our shareholding as well. Uh, beyond that, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, we are, both the companies are exploring collaboration in the spaces where there can be synergy. We strongly believe that EV currently is more about partnerships and collaboration rather than competition because it's the category that has to be built and then built under different streams of revenue and with optimization, of course. So whether it is, let's say, charging, whether it is maybe global business, uh, whether it is a front end, so there are multiple collaborations being explored between the, uh, between the two companies. Already there's a lot of learning uh, which, which gets cross-pollinated uh, between the two companies, which will help both the companies and our EV investments uh, moving forward as well. As far as uh, FinCorp is concerned, uh, you would have seen their announcement. They have closed a capital round of 2,000 crores, which is a capital raise. Um, this will help them almost double their AUM uh, from their current level of around 26,000 crores to almost close to around 50,000 crores. Their liquidity remains strong. Their uh, gearing ratios are at around 4.5 against the allowed six. So it's providing them headroom. Uh, first two quarters, uh, like most other NBFCs because of the pandemic um, and the others, they had the challenge, uh, like across the NBFC sector, as you would have seen, 
on the GNPs. Uh, but quarter three, uh, they have turned back again and uh, they have delivered a profit of 130 crores uh, for the quarter. So we don't see underlying or continuing issues as far as the asset quality is concerned. Those are all one-offs, which is a GNP, which is across the industry which happens. So this capital will actually help FinCorp grow because as we come out of pandemic and which we have, I do believe, uh, it will be back to uh, growth of NBFCs. India's credit to GDP ratio is very low and therefore it augurs well for well-funded uh, NBFCs, uh, which has strong parentage and actually offers now a renewed opportunity to grow given that the finance penetration in India is still very low. So it actually uh, builds them towards a much stronger business as smaller NBFCs start to consolidate in future. Okay, got it. Thank you. And second question is on the margin. Uh, you kind of touched on the mix improvement we are seeing, but if you could also give us some sense on what kind of price hikes that were taken during the quarter and if anything after that, and are we pretty much covered up for the uh, commodity inflation now? So, Gunjan, as you would have seen, our, our EBITDA margin, uh, uh, which we which we declared for the quarter is 12.2%. Obviously, there is some bit of recovery yet to be made. Um, uh, in terms of price increase, what we uh, did, we did from around, you know, 1st of uh, October, last week of September, close to around 1,000 rupees ex showroom price. And from 1st January, we took close to around 500 rupees ex showroom price. So we'll continue to calibrate that moving forward as we see these gradual uh, price adjustments combined with commodity softening, that should help us actually in terms of margin recovery. So that's how we expect it to be played out. But as you would have seen, we continue to take a balanced view uh, between what price we have to pass on, uh, blending it with the savings, of course, sourcing it, uh, it in an effective manner, and obviously we need to cater to growth as well. All right, thank you, I'll join that, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vimal Gohil from Union AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, uh, sir, my question on gross margin has been answered. Uh, the second one, what I, what I had was on uh, on electric vehicles. Uh, what would be your distribution strategy? Uh, are we setting up a new distribution channel or will we leverage on uh, our already strong existing uh, uh, distributor uh, uh, network? Uh, good question. So first of all, uh, let me let me take a, a bit of a broader view. Uh, there are certain uh, inherent strengths uh, that incumbent players like us have, uh, which is whether you call it um, manufacturing scale, uh, logistics distribution scale, I touched upon in the last earnings call as well, uh, with a sourcing scale, all of these actually help us in terms of uh, reducing the cost of acquisition of customer and reducing the investment which is required to achieve a certain scale in EV. Equally on the distribution side, the reach that we have at the nooks and corner of the country, certainly it will be helpful. So what we are working out is a strategy where of course there will be certain exclusive stores as well, but obviously in more ways than one, we will be looking to leverage our existing strengths as incumbent including with manufacturing, sourcing, R&D, uh, logistics, or our network. Uh, so, sir, uh, the existing stores are well equipped uh, to, in order to service the customer in terms of, uh, you know, because electric vehicles will require, uh, uh, you know, uh, separate skill levels in terms of servicing, etc. So, do you think we are prepared uh, prepared uh, for, for, for that particular uh, uh, angle, or how, how should we think about that? Uh, issue? The servicing essentially is of the two elements. If you talk of the software part of it, it is mostly over the air. So it doesn't uh, make a difference where you sell from. And the other are physical parts, which would be no different in terms of servicing, whether you do the servicing from X place or Y place or ICE or EV. Now, uh, please, we also need to remember that there are different profiles of the customers. So the customers at the city or the metros would expect a certain experience, certain environment, as you go to tier two, tier three, tier four, and you are trying to attract those customers, the environment need not be very different. So we are blending in all these learnings, uh, which are there from uh, from from our knowledge of the customer base, as well as from what has been the EV players' experience, and we're blending that to suit the channel and the strategy and the modification that we will ultimately deploy. 
Uh, you will hear more about this when we launch our, our when when we do our launch. Fair enough, sir. Uh, and sir, we are also uh, baking in some dealer profitability because if the software is going to be taken care of uh, 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 over the air, uh, then and servicing is a large portion of the dealer profitability. How are we taking care of that? That would be my uh, uh, one question. And lastly, if you could just uh, highlight your capex uh, capex uh, uh, for for FY23 and what are the investments that you plan for Ather and Hero in Carbon Twenty. That's all. So as far as dealer profitability is concerned, again, while I'll not get into granular details, but that's again another area where, as incumbent, we will be much better off because remember, EV is coming on top of our big base of ice. So it's not that every dealer will have to be exclusively profitable on EV. Of course, for the exclusive stores, they will need to be. So all those economics, all those viabilities, whatever it is for the industry, all I can say is that we will be much better off vis-a-vis -vis the industry dynamics. And eventually, whoever comes into EV space will play for the long term and not profitability in the short term, uh, any part of the eco chain. Sorry, sir, what was your second question? Uh, sir, capex requirement and in investment uh, in ah, Ather okay. and Hero uh, okay. uh, Fincorp. Yeah. Ah, so as you know, we don't give guidance on the on, on the capex requirement of Fincorp and and Ather. All I can say is, uh, Fincorp is now fully funded uh, to almost doubling their AUM. Uh, so we don't see any requirement uh, coming up. Uh, probably even in the next couple of years, and obviously at some stage they will also have to plan uh, for their listing and their IPO. Uh, as far as Ather is concerned. Uh, we'll continue to evaluate how the uh, the company will continue to evaluate the EV landscape and the EV path. Of course, the current round also they need to close the capital round. They haven't closed the capital round, and after that only they'll be able to assess uh, when the next requirement will be. And sir, your own capex? Our own capex. We will talk about it in our quarter four earnings call. Fair enough, sir. Thank you so much, and all the very best. Thank you. Welcome. The next question is from the line of Binay Singh from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, team. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, firstly, just on Gogoro, is our tie up with Gogoro exclusive or uh, others will also be allowed to use their battery swapping station? Hi, Binay. Uh, the JV that will be formed, uh, which will have the, uh, have the swapping network. Uh, that will have exclusivity in terms of the swapping uh, tie-up uh, with Gogoro. Now, whether uh, that JV operates to, uh, to to serve only Hero product or later on together we both decide to expand it uh, to others, that's something is for the JV to take a call once the JV is formed. And it can very well form uh, a different stream of revenue as well, apart from just uh, just catering to Hero branded products. But those are things that once the JV comes into being, will will get decided. Uh, okay, uh, noted. And uh, secondly, you know, when we look at electric with the launch of your peers, uh, they've launched models for more than a year. Yet we see limited city launch volume still around a thousand unit or so, uh, hampered either by production issues or supply chain issues. As you are looking into your electric launch, uh, how are you looking at uh, you know resolving these issues? Are you going for a similar limited city, sort of a slow ramp up, or planning to go for a pan-India launch? So at this stage, all I would say is uh, wait for further announcement. Uh, so when we uh, do the launch at that time, uh, we will actually come out and actually share what our overall uh, plan is. Eventually, I mean, it's not, it's honestly, it's not the start that matters, uh, but eventually, as you know, as Hero Motor Pop, uh, we would cover all segments whether it is a premium, mid, or mass segment on EV, because our objective is to is to enable electrification for everyone, on not just for exclusive set of uh, people or exclusive set of geographies. So that's the endeavor that we will have uh, to to actually straddle across across the segments, um, and and accordingly, obviously, uh, straddle across the geographies as well. Now, what pace, what speed, what scale up? That's something that we will share closer to the time. Uh, uh, thanks for that, Hiranj. And just lastly, one question on the consumer trend. Uh, you know, everybody has been waiting for replacement demand in the two-wheeler industry to come. Have you seen any change in uh, consumer trend as in replacement as a percentage of share uh, rising or so in the last few months? Uh, anything on first-time buyer versus replacement trends at the consumer level, if you could share? Thanks. Yeah, so let me hand over this question to Naveen. 
नमस्कार टू एवरी वन इज ऑन द कॉल ऑन द रिप्लेसमेंट बायर अबीप सीन दैट सिंस द टाइम द पेंडेमिक हैज हिट इन टैक्स द कंज्यूमर इज एक्चुअली नॉट कम बैक टू द लेवल दैट दे वर बिफोर पेंडेमिक हाउ एवर इन द रिसेंट टू मंथ्स आई वुड से मोर इन जनवरी uh that we have seen the replacement buyer coming in and i think one of the proxy that we also look at uh for the replacement buyer not coming in is also the increase in the paid service load in our in our dealership workshop so that's a proxy that we take and generally we have seen in some of the market of up bihar uh rajasthan uh this this there's a bit increase in terms of contribution of replacement buyer thank you uh, uh sir th- thanks for that navin any percentage number like what percentage would roughly be replacement be uh okay so it will be around 20% or so uh that's that's where it operated it was far higher uh during pre pandemic times oh okay great thanks so much thank you the next question is from line of amin pirani from jp morgan please go ahead <coughs> yes uh hi uh thanks for the opportunity uh first question was just a clarification you mentioned in the uh, in the release that uh, you've invested 150 crores in ether uh post december is this part of the 420 crores full round that you have announced if you can just help us understand yeah it's part of the full round of 420 crores you are absolutely right okay okay thank you uh, and secondly um, you know uh, just uh, on on the core business you know we we've, we've discussed this for several quarters now as to how you and you know potentially the tool industry has actually managed to maintain pricing and even profitability during 3 years of downturn now uh, so you know uh, just want to get a sense from you is that you know given that financing share continues to be quite low uh, you know uh, how should we look at profitability going forward because we are hitting peak profitability in terms of ebitda per vehicle at a time when the market is 30% lower so uh, how should we think about this because this is not something that we have seen in the past so uh, uh, let me just give some example uh, in terms of the pricing so even as you see today i mean one normally draws a very direct correlation between pricing and demand but actually it's not so uh, what we have seen is that demand is more impacted uh, by other factors than essentially price as long as you are able to provide value to the customer so for instance if you see even in these times let's take glamour when we have launched glamour x tech which is almost at 4 to 5000 rupees per vehicle higher than the base glamour uh, people are lapping that up and glamour x tech has become more than 30 35 40% of our overall glamour now therefore even within those segments if we are providing the right features and value add to the customer the customers are taking uh, the variant which is actually priced higher provided they see value in it so the that equation which as long as you keep getting it right then fundamentally one doesn't see pricing as a big issue and pricing pass on as a big issue obviously it has to be calibrated based on the on on, on the different uh, different segments so moving forward as we see uh, look the last 2 3 years as you as you rightly said has been uh, uh, years of uh, commodity challenge as well as on the underlying demand because of the pandemic uh, what has seen multiple waves and of course there was a bs6 transition as well as we move forward we see that a lot of these these big shocks are behind us and obviously the commodity also can't keep going forever i mean nothing keeps going up forever nothing keeps going down forever so when you look forward uh, then you see actually these things coming nicely together as a sweet spot uh, which is people's income coming back people wanting to spend more and also it, it, it's about it's about uh, once you decide you it's it's not a it's not a consumption spend it it's a spend that you've decided you need to and obviously because of the consumer confidence and a lot of stuff which was held back is likely to then come back so we don't see actually this as a conundrum or, or or an issue and i think we've been very sensible in not passing the entire cost as you would have seen uh, probably we would have taken price increase which is close to maybe 50% of the cost increases that have happened and around the 25% made up to leave savings and the balance 25% broadly absorbed in the margins very very broadly that's the configuration that that we have uh, that we have done so we've been very very sensible and mindful of the impact on customer as well let me also ask uh, navin to to add on this front anything you want to add navin or 
So I, I, I totally agree with you. And in fact, the consumer, in, especially in BS6 trend, if you look at uh, across the segment, uh, not just one or two or maybe premium, we've seen this is happening even in the commuter splendor. Uh, wherein the premium variant is introduced and that gets slapped up. So the consumer is primarily looking at value and also we raise also raised the point of the financing being low. I think that's also we've seen that a very innovative financing models appearing, uh, OEMs working with the financiers to evaluate and evolve those models and offer this to the customer. And we've seen the result of that in terms of the finance penetration that has gone up in the last one year. In fact, just to add on financing point, Naveen, uh, the other thing, as you would have seen in the in the budget, also the more and more financial inclusion happening, which is even post offices coming into uh, in, into the space. So I think as as it happens more and more and gets more and more into hinterland and rural, uh, the financing as a beauty of cushioning the one time or immediate impact of the outflow that a customer faces. So actually, as it increases, this should augur well uh, for the industry as such itself. Uh, Thanks a lot for the detailed explanation. Just one last thing. Uh, what is the financing penetration right now? And if you can share Hero FinCorp's uh, share in that. So uh, quarter three, our financing penetration was 58%. And Hero FinCorp continues to be in the band of 35 to 40%. So it was 35% in quarter three, FI22. Okay. And so on a full company basis, it was 58%. So, so there has been a recovery here in, in, in the financing. Yeah, across the segment, I mean, this is an overall number, uh, but the growth in retail financing has been seen across the segment, across the geographies. Fair enough, fair enough. Thanks a lot. I'll come back to the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pramod Kumar from UBS. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Before the question, just some clarification on the EV uh, uh, schedule. Uh, March, you go commercially live, or it's going to be unveiled followed by a launch at a later date? Uh, just want to clarify that. Hi, Pramod. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, so you will get to know the entire details in the month of March itself. So we'll be announcing the entire plan of uh, when the ordering will start, when the commercial uh, dispatches will start, the sales will start. All of that will get announced in the month of March along with our launch. Fair enough. And the, and the first question is to Naveen on the market uh, situation because we've heard capable companies to even uh, tractor companies complaining about uh, rural uh, inflation on the agri side, which is hurting farm uh, income. And generally, demand has been very weak. And, and even our market share trends kind of suggest uh, at around 31% in January as per Wahan that the, the rural segments are definitely suffering more. So uh, what is the confidence which of the, uh, or based on which or based on which data you're getting the confidence that FI23 is going to be a good year for the industry in terms of recovery outside of the base effect, of course, of the first quarter? Uh, because most of the other companies are warning about how incomes are taken in north for bulk of India and the disruption from Delta variant and savings being wiped out and the prices being moved heavily, right? Both uh, uh, vehicle prices and the fuel price. So what, what are the data points which are giving you that confidence uh, on demand recovery? All right. So, <clears throat> so you're right uh, that if we look at, uh, you know, what has happened over a period of time last year, uh, especially the second wave, which was far more lethal than what was expected. And in fact, it was far more deep in the country. Uh, and it actually hit the rural sentiment of far more uh, deeper. Post that, uh, you had delayed monsoon, right? And which also had a major impact on the rural crops. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and hence that continued, uh, you know, till as late as December and part of January. What gives me confidence is the recent uh, footfalls that I see in markets like UP Bihar, uh, particularly Eastern UP and the Central UP part uh, that I see that more and more footfalls are coming in my secondary network, uh, which is more of the rural based. I also firmly believe that, uh, you know, the bottoming out has actually happened, uh, right? It's only way forward. Also, if you look at consumer confidence index, uh, that's with a little bit dip in the month of January because of the third wave, uh, we are also seeing the signs are going up. Now, uh, while there has been an impact on the Kharif crop, the Ravi sowing has been pretty good, and there is a lot of uh, focus that the government has uh, in terms of investing in rural and you know getting that segment back, and it's very very critical for for the country. Uh, you know. Uh, in terms of the double-digit number that uh, Niranjan shared in his opening uh, comment, 
Uh, I think if you look at base effect of Q1 and then subsequent to that, if we, we get on to the long-term averages, uh, I think we'll, we'll get that kind of a number from uh, for the industry perspective. Right. But, but sorry, Niranjan, but given the cost inflation, the long-term averages, do they really matter? Because the long-term average on inflation is 1 or 2%, but the value price are shot up by 35-40%, fuel prices are up 50%, right. income levels are down. So is it like, is the industry being a bit too optimistic in terms of making the reduction? And also related to that, how, how are you reading the marriage season demand? Because last two years, we didn't have the marriage season in the summer, unfortunately, which is the second largest, <coughs> excuse me, second largest uh, uh, buying season. So uh, because it's very critical that the, you have a good start to the year with the marriage season. So uh, if you can make comments on that as well, sir. Let me, uh, let me probably supplement uh, what Navid is. First of all, uh, you know what happens in the times of euphoria, we get too euphoric, and in the times when there are things are down, then we get too pessimistic. I think we shouldn't forget that uh, the you know the base impact has been severe, yeah. And as we have come out, even in the today, the consumer confidence index is the highest in the last two years, sitting at 60. Second thing is when you look at in the last two years, it's only now with this wave three that some of the sectors which have not, which had not even opened up are now opening up. Colleges are opening up after a gap of two years you can see the entire sector of the economy actually opening up. Now, that provides confidence. Otherwise, people keep thinking in rural, which was rightly so after the wave two, that maybe I need to save for X, Y, Z. We don't know what else is coming. Now, that confidence is returning back, that maybe life is coming back to normal. So that's one part of the whole thing. Naveen did explain about the delayed monsoon, et cetera, et cetera, all that uh, factors. And third, of course, you see the large expenditure in the union budget, the, the, the confidence of the overall ecosystem on the private industry, which is coming back on the CapEx cycle. So I think all of this actually really augur well. And finally, you know, industries are cyclical. So after three years of negative growth, the, the whole cumulative pent up that gets accumulated or has got deferred is bound to come back. So actually we are there, therefore we are extremely positive about this. Uh, I mean, we don't see a Delta-like impact again uh, coming into free. I mean, those are once in a hundred year kind of event, and therefore we should not take those as underlying reflection of demand. Now, and also, to... I think, I mean, if the experience of Omicron, uh, subsequent to that, uh, you know, both the administration as well as people by and large uh, also adopted to the change of life. Uh, the question was also about uh, what's happening in the marriage market. Uh, we've seen there is a retail uptick in the core marriage markets uh, in the month of February. Uh, and uh, another factor that I also look at, not just the retail growth that we are expecting and that we are experiencing in the current month, is also about these, these purchases are normally uh, cash purchases. And hence, uh, the trend that we were observing in terms of retail finance penetration for the last four, five months, we've seen that also dipping a little on account of uh, the, the cash purchases that happened in ma marriage markets. So core marriage markets, there is a positive take. Great. And I mean, where's the system inventory now? Dealer plus sub dealers? Uh, in terms of uh, forward looking, uh, that we look at on our retails, uh, we are at seven to eight weeks kind of inventory right now at a dealer. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot and wish you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh from ITI Limited. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello, Rajesh. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, so, you know, if I look at, uh, let's say, Hero Moto, we are uh, in a very sweet spot in the state as far as the EV challenge is there because we are also an incumbent. As well as, you know, we have uh, Lars taking one of the, I would say, successful uh, startup entity. Uh, my question was, you know, if I look at, uh, of course, there may not be any uh, clear answers at this stage. But if I look at next three to five years, when we know that, uh, you know, EV penetration uh, would have happened and there will be a certain uh, substantial percentage of some segments will be EV. Uh, you know, whom do you think will be, you know, uh, or who does, who has the right to win in this? Because why I'm asking is if we talk to startups, you know, their distribution strategies, let's say, uh, target, you know, top four metros in first three months, then go to 
next 10 cities you know likewise uh, go on funneling so that uh, you capture more area uh, uh, production everybody is announcing large capacities but uh, nobody has seen so far you know we haven't seen deliveries so we don't know what are the challenges and these are the areas where you know we are uh, uh, third is of course brand i mean uh, there will be at least uh, 40 50 new guys who are coming up with electric scooters not all of them are as formidable or you know buyers may not be as confident uh, on all of them and these are the areas where you know uh, we or you know all the incumbents are very very uh, uh, at an advantageous point so uh, just want to hear your thoughts you know because this is, uh, and incumbents are also spending a lot of capital as well as effort in the background which is which may not may or may not be visible uh, so three years down the line, who you think would have, you know, the right to win? How many players could the market have? Uh, or will it be a, you know, a very, very dispersed and um, fragmented market with, uh, you know, everybody there? Uh, so just wanted to hear your thoughts on, you know, how you look at it. You may have studied some other uh, geographies where, you know, EVs have already penetrated. So uh, what are your thoughts on this? Right. Uh Lots of questions in one question, uh, Rajesh, but let me attempt. So first of all, uh, look, as far as EV is concerned, in no country in the world it has reached the maturity stage. And therefore, there are no inferences that can be drawn from that. Uh, having said that, any industry that you look at, right, which goes through a lot of entry of new players because of the attractiveness of the segment or ease of entry or whatever is seen on, on the valuation side, eventually has to go through consolidation. We've seen it industry after industry, and that, that, that's the truth globally. So yes, next three to five years, you're absolutely right. Whether it's 20 players, 30 players, 40 players, 50 players, we don't know, but there'll be many players. Yeah, there are already many, there may be more. Uh, but eventually after that, uh, steam has to run out and consolidation has to happen. Now, who will win? If you ask me, I'll say we will win. Uh, if you ask anybody else, they'll also say they will win. So let me also talk about maybe the factors that will determine who will win. Uh, it's, the, it, it's, a, it's the understanding of the customer because the EV customer, fortunately or unfortunately, whichever we look at it, is also part of the planet Earth. And that's what I keep saying, that it's not coming from some other planet. So I think it's the understanding of the customer, whoever has the most, uh, that is one very important Focus on, on, on giving customer what they need and maybe giving what they, what they may not have even imagined. So focus on the C, which is the customer is important. The second, which will be important is cost competitiveness. Today, that's not being stressed enough. Uh, today, cash burn is fancy, but moving forward, uh, cash burn has to give way to cash earn. And that is where cost competitiveness is extremely important. So players, who can establish long-term cost competitiveness, whether it is a bomb cost or the capex cost or cost of operating or distribution, et cetera, et cetera, uh, that will determine uh, winning. And third is, of course, a long-term view uh, of, the, of the entire business uh, per se. So these are the factors, key factors. There may be many others, of course, but there are capabilities that can be acquired, uh, there are investments that can be made, capital is no longer a barrier. So I think these are the factors that will determine uh, who will win. But of course, we as Zero Motor Corp, uh, we have said it earlier, uh, we invested uh, in startup uh, five years back when nobody was actually taking probably EV segment seriously. Uh, and and we've gone ahead with tie up with Gogoro, which is on swapping network, understanding that uh, different customers may require different solution at the front end for charging. Uh, and equally, obviously, uh, we, we will be coming out uh, with our own product as well. Uh, so we will continue to work uh, very strongly on this uh, as far as EV segment is concerned. Finally, I also want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, just amplify what you actually rightly said, uh, that for us, we are very low market share in scooters. So EV segment, EV penetration actually is a sweet spot for us because it helps us because we are very under in scooters, so it gives us a chance to actually build uh, our penetration in that segment. Uh, motorcycle, which is almost 70%, uh, is not going to get electrified in a hurry. And we all know the reasons for that. Uh, so for the first few years, uh, it will be about scooter, which actually works uh, well uh, from our own portfolio shape and where we are. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raghunandan NL from MK Global. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, uh, two questions. Uh, firstly, being one of the early movers towards swappable battery technology, uh, you know, in terms of the efforts with Hero Gogoro, uh, is the launch uh, on track uh, for the CY22 timeline? Any details you can share on JV Investments? Hi. Uh... At this point in time, uh, I wouldn't be able to share any further uh, versus what we have shared earlier. Uh, but uh, as we as we move forward uh, and closer to the time, we'll keep updating you uh, with more and more. But the teams are working um, uh, very fast on on actually both the solutions, which is the charging solution as well as the swapping solution. Understood. Uh, sir, secondly, would you be able to share at what valuation you have invested uh, 420 crores in Ether in recent round of funding, or would that announcement happen once the funding round is finished? Yeah, so your, your second part actually answers that, so I won't be able to uh, give any valuation at this stage. The round still has to be closed, and obviously the company then uh, Ather, uh, which is raising the capital, will make the appropriate disclosure as may be required. Uh, one clarification on the replacement share, which has now fallen to 20%. Uh, in the uh, you know earlier years, say FI18, FI19, was the replacement share closer to 45-50% uh, to Naveen sir? No, uh, so now what is, it is currently, uh, it's as I said around 20%, so you might look at the maybe plus minus 2%, but I think uh, it was as high as uh, nearing 30% uh, at one point of time. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kapil Singh from Nomura. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon, sir. Um, a very interesting point you made on the uh, scooter business. Um, um, you know, I had a similar question. Uh, so let me just also try and understand from a swapping perspective, uh, uh, do you think swapping would be a mainstream product or it would work in certain segments like delivery? Uh, what, what are your thoughts? Because, you know, it requires slightly more investment uh, on a system basis, right? Because you, you need to invest in, let's say, 1.5 or whatever that number is, number of batteries. So um, uh, what just what are your thoughts uh, around that? And uh, are you also focused on increasing the uh, i-scooter market share? Because, you know, it's it's been struggling a bit uh, in last few months. So just some thoughts around that. Let me uh, talk about the swapping first, Kapil. Uh, uh, so, Kapil, we'll have to we'll have to see how the customers evolve. Yeah, obviously, uh, the the B two B segment, which is the delivery business and all that, uh, is clearly a commercial segment. Is 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 obvious, uh, obviously amenable uh, to swapping. Uh, as far as the uh, uh, personal vehicle segment is concerned, uh, Taiwan has shown that even there. Uh, segments of customers actually prefer that because they can't afford to wait for an hour at the charging station and in the queue, and therefore this two-minute, three-minute swapping works. Now, how it evolves in India, how it evolves in different geographies, uh, honestly, we will have to put it in and then see, uh, because this is a this is a new animal, and it can behave differently in different geographies, in different classes of customers, uh, basis their job profile or business profile. So all of that we will be able to know only once the product is out as to what share it will occupy vis-a-vis -vis the normal normal charging. As far as the iScooter is concerned, let me hand it over to Naveen uh, to address that. So uh, I see that you know, the question got preceded with the scooters on EV and maybe the, the huge action that Hero is doing on EV uh, is actually causing that uh, to come as a supplementary. But uh, just to give you a uh, flavor on scooters, uh, while we know that EV is going to grow, but then uh, the ice would still hold uh, the, the significant share in, in the scooter segment for some time to come. Uh, there's a lot of actions on the product side, on the geography size side, which are being in place. Uh, pleasure, if you look at, there is a lot of action in terms of uh, premiumization of the product. We launched XTech, uh, 
uh, within two months, the contribution of Xtech has gone more than 20%. And I think Pleasure is the only scooter in 110 category, which has gained market share on a YTV level. The change that has happened in this industry, which is kind of something which is happening for the last three years, is that 125cc segment in, uh, in the scooter segment is actually growing very rapidly. Uh, we are coming up with a very strong product uh, value prop with Destiny x -Tech in 125cc and that's going to be uh, you know, playing in the core belly of that segment. So efforts are on. Uh, you know, pleasure if it was a limited geography product, it's going to go getting into the Pan India basis. And we are quite positive that with pleasure there, Destiny x -Tech coming in, uh, Mestrage 125 playing, and we have subsequent plans in terms of interesting product for the next year to come to gain uh, market share to our uh, desired levels. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for that. Uh, the second question is, uh, uh, you know, uh, sir, on uh, you mentioned that one of the important metrics for success in EVs will also be cost leadership. Now, uh, two important elements there are the uh, you know battery cost as well as the distribution cost. So some of the players have taken this approach, not only in India, but I, I mean globally also we have seen where they are into the direct distribution model. And also, you know, some players are, uh, you know, investing in battery. So, uh, you know, to address those, uh, how are you thinking about the, these two elements? Right. Uh, so, as we said, and you have to be right, cost leadership will define the long-term winners, uh, and, and that's extremely important. Uh, it's not just battery and, and, and distribution. Actually, there are all aspects of the, of, of the cost lever which is there. Uh, so, so let me talk, for instance, swapping, which you just touched upon. Uh, in swapping, and you talked about the 1.5 factor, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this road to rack ratio, which is what, which is what it is called, Actually, that gets improved on the knowledge of your peak time, on replenishment, a lot of knowledge that happens and how do you improve that. Therefore, the density coverage that you want to have, at what distances you want to have the stations, which places. Now, which is where, again, if you have an existing knowledge, it helps. And which is where our partnership with Goguro, because Goguro has got four, five, six years of that experience in improving the road to rack ratio in Taiwan. All of that comes handy. And therefore, that actually can benefit in terms of the cost leadership very, very clearly vis-a-vis -a, -vis a new player in swapping who would not have the existing knowledge of that. So the knowledge becomes an, uh, a, an important part and parcel of, of how you achieve cost leadership, apart from the physicality of what you do as a business model on battery and distribution. On battery, of course, there are people who have tied up, there are people who are sourcing, but our view is that given there are so many players going to come in cell manufacturing, this will be a place where globally or locally, given the PLI on advanced cell chemistry, uh, there will be multiple players coming with big capexes on that, and therefore the optionality of sourcing from the best source on quality and cost is probably a better way forward as we see it now. Of course, one keeps evaluating these, but this is the uh, this is the upfront, uh, this front distribution. Uh, honestly, you know, uh, the, the, the direct to customer uh, is, 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 is potentially more because the startups do not have the existing distribution channel. And therefore, setting that up would require long time and huge investments. And obviously for that, therefore, the direct to customer becomes uh, the obvious model to go in fast. And therefore, eventually, if you look at it, I mean, the, the, the cost leadership in, in a distributed model, which is with network, will always be cheaper than direct distribution or direct to customer, given the number of customers that you're servicing and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and the sheer physicality of the, of the equipment that you are talking about. So underlying economics of actually direct to customer will always be costlier. Uh, inherently compared to a distributed uh, distributed network. But I think these things will evolve and one will have to see with scale how it pans out. Uh, so too early to take a call on that. But focus on cost leadership is extremely important, like you said, uh, from a long-term uh, winning winning point of view. Thank, thank you very much for the detailed answer. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chirak Shah from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, first, there's some housekeeping questions. Uh, uh, for like, is spare parts everything you indicated? What was the number for the quarter? Sorry, I didn't get the uh, I, I didn't get the question. Can you repeat it again? 
स्पेर पार्ट्स रेवेन्यू हाँ ओके स्पेर पार्ट्स रेवेन्यू फॉर द क्वार्टर वाज 1186 क्रोर्स एस आई सेड व्हिच इज 15 परसेंट ग्रोथ ईयर ऑन ईयर बेसिस लास्ट ईयर क्वार्टर थ्री वाज 1033 क्रोर्स एंड इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन जस्ट द सीडिंग क्वार्टर व्हिच वाज द क्वार्टर टू वाज 1141 क्रोर्स स uh, and as we said, uh, there are big plans to actually uh, take it forward. Naveen, why don't you spend a couple of minutes talking about our PAM business and, and our plan? Sure, Niranjan. I think you've been helping me there. Uh, so I think this is something that we've, we've discussed uh, in the last running calls also. Uh, the focus, uh, if I put it broadly, is how do we enhance the non-product revenue bucket? Uh, spare parts being uh, the major contributor to that space. A uh, lot of work in terms of uh, the core spare parts that we sell in dealerships and across, a lot of work at the dealerships in terms of uh, you know, growing, and focus is not just about growing revenue of spare parts, but also about dealership profitability that emanates from the workshop. And also aftermarket, the deep distribution approach that we have taken. We're also looking at what are the adjacent revenue streams which are available in non-product revenue when we're talking about, and how do we work on that? Uh, we worked on oil uh, last year, and we've seen significant growth in the oil revenues and oil business. Uh, and also it helps us continue to remain in touch with our consumers who are going in aftermarket with the brand. Uh, and hence, I mean, that's one line. Uh, so there is organic way of going deeper, and then looking at other revenue streams and lines. Sir, any more products? So how should we look at the product that we are looking to use in the in the replacement market or after sales market? What All right, are so the I'm... options available for you or on which you are looking to expand over the next two, three years? All right, so I'll give you an example. Uh, as I said, you know, if I look at go back four years, we were 99% was spare parts. Started working on accessories. Uh, then we introduced merchandise, which is still a small baby. Uh, then oil business. And you've got batteries, tires. So there are lots of uh, lines uh, mm -hmm. for the consumers, which consumers normally get replaced in aftermarket. And we, having a very strong connect with consumers, I think those are the revenue lines which are available. Also within the core spare parts, if I look at, you know, like you have products, models, you also have product lines which may be brake lines or maybe uh, you know, cables, uh, AVS parts. So there are multiple lines and we continue to monitor what's our market share of these components in different geographies and in an overall level. And there is, uh, then you bring about your approach. Uh, we've got 120,000 technicians, which are independent technicians, which are connected with us. And month on month, there are 60,000 technicians who, who interact and, you know, deal with us. We've seen our revenue through these technicians going three times in last five years. I mean, I, so it's plus 100 crores, basically. So that's the number which is. So those are our growth levers that we use uh, for a continual growth that you're seeing over a period of time. And quarter on quarter, we see that positive impact. Yeah, this is helpful. Uh, just two more clarifications. Uh, you the inventory level you mentioned seven to eight weeks. Did I hear it right? Or yeah. Okay. And that's from the forward-looking perspective in terms of the way we look at how the retail uh, forecast that we have for the month of February March. So this is more to do with delay in the festive or marriage season, and that's why the inventory number generally at this time inventory is slightly lower, right? So it is because of largely because of that. Yeah, you are absolutely right. It's largely because of that. As industry wide, we have seen uh, that the festive was not uh, uh, not as good as as what one uh, one one expected, and therefore that's the carryover. Otherwise, you are right. Uh, six weeks is the top up that one has uh, as the uh, as the inventory levels. And so, last is pre COVID. What was the finance penetration? You mentioned fifty eight percent for the quarter. So, have we crossed that number? It, it used to be lower, if I recollect. Yeah, 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 I don't think it was more than 40 to 45 percent. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. There is a significant shift uh, in the retail finance penetration that we've seen in this year. And this is continuing, as I said, uh, till now. It's a combination of the two things. One, of course, like we've been mentioning, a lot of work that we've been doing uh, in terms of finance penetration. And you see, uh, quarter after quarter, we've been talking about that. Our thrust on that, uh, we see that underpenetrated. 
Second, of course, is as the COVID has impacted, people also then go try to go for more financing solution uh, because obviously, uh, like like someone asked that how to counter inflation. Now, one of the ways to counter inflation is actually financing penetration, and therefore people themselves go for financing solutions. I think combination of both the factors have led to the financing penetration increasing. Yeah, and and I think the industry, both OEMs, as I said, and the financiers, have been innovative in terms of understanding the consumer needs. This is the operator. We have lost the connection for the management line. Please hold while we reconnect them. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the management line connected again. So please go ahead. Yeah, so we just explained that there's a combination of the two factors that has led to the financing penetration. I'm sorry for the call drop. Uh, beyond a point, as you can see, on technology, you don't have control. and <laughs> Technology becomes supreme over human beings. All right. Yeah, so, so last clarification, so sequentially, there is a significant improvement in gross profit margin, the 130 odd bits. Now, I presume this is more driven by mix uh, rather than commodity uh, benefits coming in. Would we write a such point? I think it's a combination. It's a combination of, uh, I would say, mix, as well as uh, when you see uh, the savings programs that we have been running. So I wouldn't say commodity benefits. I think commodity benefits are yet to flow through uh, because while they have stabilized, it's not that they have dropped uh, to give that benefit. Uh, but yeah, it's a combination of mix and the savings that you're talking about. Okay. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank, Thank you. you. The next question is from the line of Nishit Jalan from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. I, I have just one question left. Uh, uh, what would be the share of two-wheelers which are uh, sold in uh, schools, colleges and all? In general, you may not have exact numbers. Any rough number would be helpful. Uh, in, a, in a normal year, not the last uh, two, three years. And secondly, would it be too different uh, uh, between motorcycles and scooters? Yeah. So, uh, so uh, I mean, we, we do track in terms of uh, the end usage uh, of uh, our products. So, may not have a breakup at a scooter and a motorcycle level, but uh, I mean, I mean I'll, I can share the data that we have. It's close to eight to ten percent is what is getting sold to the students. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Thank you. In interest of time, this was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Thank you, everyone, for coming in. It's a pleasure. Please keep safe, and we look forward uh, to, to speaking to all of you uh, after uh, in quarter four as well. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for attending the call. Thank, Thank you very much. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.